In the last video, we were trying to figure out what is the probability that a randomly selected student carries a cell phone given that the student carries an MP3 player. Knowing, we know the probability of any student just carrying a cell phone. The probability of the student carrying an MP3 player provided he is carrying a phone. And the probability that the student car carries an MP3 player provided he or she does not carry a phone. We have resolved that the probability of a student carrying a cell phone given that the probability or given rather that the student carries an MP3 player via the formula of conditional probability is this one. We were able to figure out what's the probability of a student carrying a cell phone and an MP3 player, but we are not sure what's the probability of a student carrying an MP3 player. We then resolved to illustrating it that Say, for example, since it's percentages, it's easy to benchmark it on 100, we had the following values, that this is the 70%, and out of the 70%, 80% of that 70% carries an MP3 player, which is 56, or 56%. Now, the probability of a student not carrying a cell phone will be 30%, since the probability of the student carrying is 70%. And according to what else is given to us is that the probability of a student having an MP3 player given that student doesn't have a cell phone is 60%. So we figured out the 60% of 30%, which is around 18 or 18%. Now, can we resolve the probability of, the st of a student having an MP3 player? It's this one here, the ones marked in blue. So if we're going to think about it, we have 56% of the 70, 56% of the students who would have MP3 players with phones, and 18 of the students would have MP3s without phones. So the total number of students who would have MP3s, let's write that down. So the cardinality now of our event of a student having an MP3 would be our 56 plus 18, which is equal to 74. 74. So that would mean that around 74% of the students have MP3 players. 74. So this translates to 74%. Of the students having mp3 players so this is the probability of m now that we have figured that out we can now place it in our formula up here this one here so but i will write it here down below so it's easier for us to reference it the probability of a student having a cell phone given that the student has a phone will now be equal to this 56, which is the probability of the student having a cell phone and an MP3 player. So let's have that 56 or that 56% over the probability that the student will have an MP3 player, which is a total of 74 or 74%. In fraction, this will actually give us an amount of 28 over 37 or rounded off to make it a percentage around 75.675, not 76, 75.68%. So that means there's around 75.68% chance that a student carries a cell phone provided that the student carries an MP3 player. So this one, there you go. This one here out of the total of those who had mp3 players so this problem actually is a special type of conditional probability wherein we had a new piece of information which is our event that the student has an mp3 player that updates our previous information which is the probability of students having cell phones now the relatively old or previous piece of information which is c can be thought of as some sort of our hypothesis some sort of hypothesis 
because this is what we would usually know. Now, we have a new piece of information or we have some sort of evidence for our previous piece of information. This evidence restricts our view of our hypothesis. As you can see here in the illustration, the new piece of information here, which is the one written in blue, restricted our sample space of students, like what we do in conditional probability. Instead of looking at all the 70 and 30, we only look at the 74 students or 74% of the students who have MP3 players. Now, in terms of probabilities, this information that we know, the probability of the hypothesis or the first information we know is what we term as a prior probability or the prior information. Now, the probability of the evidence that we have is given provided that our hypothesis is true. This one here. So, the, pro the probability that the evidence is true given that our hypothesis is true is what is known as our likelihood. Let's write it here. The probability that our evidence, our new piece of information is true, given that our hypothesis is true, is what is known as the likelihood. Now, resolving these, one of the things that were important is figuring out the total number here. And we figure that out by finding this probability here. And we know that the 56 came from the fact that based from conditional probability, this is actually the probability of a student having a cell phone and an MP3 player, which is we were able to solve it by multiplying the probability of C times the probability, probability of M given C. Now, the other total, this one here, is actually also solved by multiplying our C complement, like what you saw a while ago, we got this, or what you saw rather in the previous video, we got this by multiplying the probability of C complement, which is this one here, to the probability that our evidence is true given oops, this one here, given that the hypothesis is not true. Or given that our first information is not true, what's the probability of our evidence still holds even if the first information that we know is, doesn't hold? And adding these gave us the total of the probability of the evidence holds. So to sum it all up, Let's scroll down a little bit. Here you go. This probability here, the probability that the prior is true, given that our evidence is true, is actually equal to the probability, oops, maybe I should have made that color blue to be true to our colors, the probability that the hypothesis and our evidence is true all over the probability that our evidence is true is just the same as by the definition of multiplication rule this is actually the probability that the prior is multiplied to the probability of our likelihood the probability of our likelihood there you go that's how we got that all over this sum here the probability of this exact same number, the probability of our prior multiplied to our likelihood, M given C, added, remember we added this 2 to get a total of 74, added to the probability of the complement of the prior multiplied to the other probability which is the probability that the evidence is true given that the hypothesis is not 
because we can have that. We like what we saw here. We have students who would have MP3s, but they do not have cell phones. But we still want that number because that's the total number of MP3s that we want. We want to know. This one here, this formula here, is what is known as Bayes' theorem. And we will formalize Bayes' theorem in the next video.